meeting to order. Six PM. Could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you, everybody. Joan, can you do roll call for us, please? Priscilla Manuelito. Present. Kevin Mitchell. Here. Lynn Heineman. Sandra Jeff. Joe Menini. Present. Thank you. Number two, we have approval of agenda. Um, Madam President? Yes. Um, um, I would like to remove, I guess have to remove the Navajo Nation School Clothing Program. Um, we don't have a re anybody to report on that this evening. I would also like to remove um, board reports for this evening and replace that with um, our executive session. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Are they, is the Navajo Clothing Program going to come on a different agenda, sir? We will try again. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wallace was not able to come tonight. He's on travel. So. Okay, thank you. There's a motion to um, take out the Nav um, A1B the Navajo Nation Clothing Program, also A1, A2 board report, and replace it with the executive session. Can I please have roll call? Mr. Menini? Yes. Ms. Jeff? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. Mr. Um, Hinneman? Oh. Um, we took out one A1B, the Navajo Clothing Program, um, for a later date due to the presenter being on travel. We also took out um, under 5A2 board report, and we replaced it with the executive session. You're welcome. Um, we're now on 2A public comment. We have Brenda Yazi, a parent. Good evening. Yat A. Shea Brenda Yazi and Shea. A Shea and Shloki Anibas Sheen. House, Indian Education Committee representing Twin Lakes Elementary. I just, first of all, I just wanted to thank the outgoing board members for your support of Indian Education and our Native American students. Thank you for the term that you had on the on the board. Thank you very much. My concern is the Indian Education Johnson and Miley funding. We got a report that a lot of schools have not even used one dollar of their monies. Funds are not being used. Our uh, principal schools are not using the Indian Education Johnson Mallee funds. And I think that's a concern. And 
Schools and principals are aware, are made aware of how to use these funds. They should have plans in place at the beginning of the school year. The, or the IEC website, part of the district is updated. All the forms, everything they need is accessible to them. But a lot of schools have not even used that money. My concern is because when you know we're going to read in the independent that it was our fault, that all this money went back to the Navajo Nation. Something needs to happen to where these schools need to be held accountable. Principals need to make themselves aware of what, what this money was supposed to be used for. We have 10,000 plus Native American students with a CIB. The funds are to serve the unique needs of Native American students, and that's not happening. And it's, it's um, sad to see all this money going to waste because they don't want to use it. There's no plans in place. Uh, no one is making that initiative to spend these money. I understand there's an email that was sent out by the administration, but there has been no response. So something needs to happen because this money is going to be reverted back to the Navajo Nation. Uh, there's, like I said, no participation. Uh, this is the first year that Indian Education Committee will fund students, middle school and high school students, to the National JOM Conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The same thing, only two schools responded to that request. That was for middle school and high school students. All these years we had, um, uh, we've attended the National JOM Conference at distances. We've seen, I've seen students from all over, Ganado School District, Central Consolidated School District, Navajo Prep, all these schools that take 20 to 30 of their students to these conferences for Native American students. This is the first year that we had that opportunity to do that. Information was sent out to the schools, to middle, all middle school schools, all high school schools, and only two schools responded. And I just want to make that information known because we always hear opposite news on the independent. We are trying our best to con collaborate with the schools. We go to the parent meetings. We attend the chapter meetings. There is no response from the schools. Like I said, most schools have not even spent one dollar. To me, that's a concern, and I just wanted that to be addressed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Yazi. Okay. Moving on to three, approval of minutes, February 6, 2017. Madam President, I did not see any corrections. Did any of the other board members see anything? Therefore, I move that the minutes be approved as presented. Thank you, Mr. Menini. Roll call, please. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Joan. I'll let Joan take care of that. I'm sorry, Joan. Okay. All right. Miss Jeff. Staying. Mr. Heineman? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Miss Manuelito? Yes. Thank you. We move on to four approval of consent agenda items. C, B, C, 6, uh, 6C, 6E, 8B, 8C. Madam President? Yes, Ms. Mr. Hitterman? Um, I just have a comment for um, when it comes to the financial reports that we get, uh, including ones that are emailed thinking particularly the ones that are emailed to us, 
One of the things that always interests me in those is the items where it's dollars for professional development. And uh, because I'm always interested in what we're doing for professional development, I don't have any problem with any of the items. Uh, just every time I see that, I want to, you know, get a hold of somebody in the business office and say, what did they do? Or, or you know, what was this more specifically for? Uh, just because I think professional development is important. And, and by the time I get to those reports, it's, you know, some of it I was looking at today and it's, it's too late to, to follow up that way. But I uh, just want to mention that uh, because those, are, those tend to be sometimes sizable totals. There's one this, in the last report for $25,000 total to uh, uh, empower, I think is the name of the group. So uh, I trust they're valuable, but, you know, we don't really quite see what, go, what the content of all those items is. And so it's just a, a comment uh, in terms of not getting to always dig into those things as much as I'd like. But otherwise, I would move approval of the consent, consent items. Thank you, Mr. Hiddeman. Roll call, please. Mr. Manini? Yes. Ms. Jeff? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. Thank you. We'll move on to five um, study circle. We have A report one, superintendent's report. Madam President, Board of Education, uh, I would invite Mrs. Ms. Frazier. Up, our public relations coordinator, and she has a, some presentations for this evening. Good evening, Madam President, School Board, Interim Superintendent. We do have some recognitions this evening, and I'd like to start off with you taking a look at the back wall and the magnificent art that's back there. That art was created not only by fifth graders at Red Rock Elementary, but middle schoolers at Gallup Mid. They were entered in a contest at Rio West Mall celebrating African uh, American Heritage Month. And we had the first, second, and third place winners all come from Gallup schools. So uh, congratulations to them. I would like to uh, do several proclamations for these uh, pieces of art. Our plan is to uh, give the proclamations to the teachers this evening. And then after we get the list of all the names inclusive uh, who were uh, part of it, we intend to go to the school and offer the students uh, certificates uh, for their participation in this. So that's the process. <clears throat> the first proclamation uh, reads, whereas Red Rock Elementary participated in African American Heritage Month, in 2017, and whereas Mrs. Gamble's fifth grade class participated in a mini unit on Martin Luther King and civil rights, and whereas Red Rock, the Red Rock fifth graders were awarded second place in the Rio West Mall Martin Luther King Art Contest, and their piece of art is the long black one there, and whereas each student participated in an exercise in working together to achieve something greater than they could accomplish alone. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Gallup-McKinley County School Board that congratulations be extended to Mrs. Gamble's fifth grade class and that they be recognized for their contributions to GMCS African American Heritage Month in February of 2017. Respectfully signed and sealed by Priscilla Manuelito, School Board President, and Mike Hyatt, GMCS Interim Superintendent. May I call Ms. Tara Gamble up, please? I was at Gallup Mid when Mrs. Gamble arrived there to be an, uh, a new teacher. And from day one, Mrs. Gamble has set the bar very, very high when it comes to art at Gallup Mid, I'm, and now she's at Red Rock, so thank you. The second proclamation uh, goes to Mr. Michael Gamble. I'm sure they're related. 
Um, so this one says, whereas Gallup Middle School art classes participated in African American Heritage Month, and whereas Mr. Michael Gamble, Gamble's third hour class participated in a collective art project pertaining to Martin Luther King, and whereas the Gallup Middle School art students were awarded third place in the Rio West Mall Martin Luther King Art Contest for the piece entitled Dream, and whereas each student participated in an exercise in working together to achieve something greater than they could accomplish alone. Now therefore be it resolved by the Gallup McKinley County School Board that congratulations be extended to Mr. Gamble's third hour class and they be, they be recognized for their contributions to GMCS African American Heritage Month in February of 2017. The dream one is this colored one right next to the long black one. And just to let you know that each one of those squares on each one of those last four pieces of art represents one child being given the task of creating this one piece of art to collectively put together. I present to you Mr. Michael Gamble, not only for third place, but also for first place as we recognize his first hour class winning first place. Michael? Congratulations. Again, board, these two individuals are highly motivated, highly skilled, and highly interested in our students of Gallup McKinley County Schools. If we could give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> Next up, Madam President and School Board, we do have some board members leaving us this evening, them being, this being their last board meeting. And so with that, I'd like to call up Ms. Sandra Jeff, in appreciation for your dedication and service to the GMCS Board of Education from July 2016 to February 2017. Next, we have serving from August 2015 to February of 2017, presented to Mr. Lynn Heeneman in appreciation for your years of dedication and service to the GMCS Board of Education. Mr. Heeneman. he was going to leave us with his briefcase there. I'm going to go around and then you don't think I'm going to let this opportunity go without saying something. <laughs> uh, for our next and certainly not our last or least board member, I have two awards to give one being presented to Mr. Joseph Menini by the New Mexico School Boards Association. It's called an exemplary award uh, to Mr. Menini of the Gallup McKinley County Public School Board of Education. This certificate acknowledges that this board member earned 20 or more hours of mandated training within the 2015-16 program. Signed Ron Singleton, who is the School Board Association President, and Joe Guillen, who is the School Board Association Executive Director. So that's number one. Number two, from March 2010 to February 2017, almost seven full years serving us here, I present Joe Menini in, in appreciation for your years of dedication and service to the GMCS Board of Education.
hate to make a correction, but it's been eight years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, fellow members of the board, <laughs> I want to say a couple things. One is to Joe, I want to acknowledge your perseverance through all of this. In the last year and a half that I've had the privilege of being on the board, we know that you went through some health challenges and nevertheless, you stuck with it through our late night meetings. <laughs> and you didn't give up uh, in spite of how you were feeling sometimes. And you've recovered, the way it appears, to a great extent for which we're grateful. So thank you, Joe. Secondly, I want to thank the, the board members for the privilege of being on the board this year and the past year and a half. I've been in education all of my life, ever since kindergarten. But I've never been on a board before. And it's different. And it's a unique privilege. I have learned as well as worked a little bit, and so I thank you for that opportunity. Second, I want to apologize to the schools in my district for not getting there more. I did not make school visits nearly as much as I feel I should have and would have wanted to. Uh, my life is as busy as ever, even though they call me retired. But I do regret not getting to schools more, and I Successor here maybe can be better at that than I was. Uh, third, I want to clarify something just a little bit. It has been um, something that's been sort of on my agenda consistently to support the school's effort or to advocate for the school having a significant role in helping revitalize Navajo language. And that is, as I've said before, because I think historically it's formal Western education schools that have been largely responsible for the decline in Navajo language. When you go back to the treaty, from then on, English has been mandated, and English is not bad. I speak it myself. But it has been, when you take kids six to eight hours a day, five days a week, most of the days of the year, most of the years of their life until they're 18, and put them in an essentially English immersion, it has weakened Navajo. And some people think I'm concerned about that and interested in that because my family happens to be all enrolled, my immediate family, my wife and the children are all enrolled members of the Navajo Nation. But that's not, it goes back further than that. In my family history, on my mom's side are what we call German Russians. They were German people who were uh, brought to Russia to help settle some occupied land, actually that was in dispute for historically between Russia and Turkey. And they were invited by a lady named Catherine the Great, who was of German extraction. Sometimes she's not so great, <laughs> but she was the czarist. And when those people were in Russia, they remained, they kept their German identity. They kept their German language. They kept their self-government of their villages or their colonies and of their churches. And when Germany, I mean, when Russia then changed their policy and tried to Russify 
tried to turn these people into Russians by requiring them to attend Russian school, serve in the Russian military, give up their local government. That's when they came to this country. And so my parents spoke German before they learned English in school. My grandpa spoke not only what we call High German, the formal literate German, he also spoke a dialect called Kusslicher. And that little dialect is now almost extinct. There's a handful of people who are fluent at it. That language is not needed in the world. It's not necessary for world events, okay? But it's like a little flower that's just about to fade and be the last one of that kind of flower. Because that dialect, because I know just a little bit of it, has unique expressions that don't exist in formal high German. They don't exist in English. Now, Navajo is much more than that little dialect. But it's the basis of a whole cultural knowledge and a whole identity. And so I come at that, I just wanted to let you know, not just because of involvement with Navajo things in my recent years, but because it resonates with me at a deep level in my own identity. I know my identity. I'm not advocating for Navajo education because I'm a wannabe and don't know who I am. I know who I am. I know my family history on both sides way back. And family identity is important. I have 60 first cousins. Talk about extended families. All right. So I know I'm taking a little time here, but I, I want to share that with you because the board experience has been sometimes frustrating, sometimes fun, once in a while, but it's been very meaningful to me because I think identity is still always part of even the formal education process and what we're learning tells us who we are and the colonial nature of history does continue. The colonial impact of Western history is still being worked out in neocolonial fashion, even in our school. So all the good things we learn, and the things we learn are good, they also still have that dimension if we don't leave room kids to learn who they are in terms of their family, their own cultures, and there again, I speak not just about Diné, I speak about the every background of every kid in our district. We have such, as I keep saying, we have such a rich community when it comes to cultural backgrounds. And, and the more we can appreciate that, and so I was glad to hear the reports this evening uh, about African American History Month and so on. So anyway, you get my gist. And those of you who know me know where I'm coming from. So, yahel. Yahel Thank you, Lynn, very much. I appreciate your comments. And it all started with public comments when you were coming to our school board meetings way back when. And I appreciate you continuing. Thank you. Uh, I want to recognize some of my students that I had. Many of them are now principals in this district. I did not have some of them, but I did have Miss Arthur. So thank you very much for continuing your education, too. Uh, thank you, not me. <laughs> yes, I did have you as a student. And she was one of my student aides. And uh, I don't think I could have done anything without her. In fact, I had her father as a typing teacher back in the ninth grade. So education runs in that family. So thank you very much. It's been a long eight years. I want to thank very much the board and the students and the faculty and also the public that's here tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Madam President and school board, we bid the board members farewell in thanking them for their service to Gallup McKinley County Schools. Thank you. And uh, that is it for recognitions tonight, ma'am. Thank you very much, Terry. Uh, Mrs. Jeff? Thank you. 
And um, thank you, Terry, for um, presenting us with the, the plaques. I just want to take the opportunity to thank my board, my board members, my colleagues for um, the six months, I think, I was with you. And um, I really enjoyed it. And I think that it has really become political. But despite that, you know, I think that we have to look beyond that because it's really about our kids, it's about the students, and it's about the teachers as well as the rest of the employees. And I'm hoping that with the new start that that happens because, you know, there's no need for politics, especially at the expense of our kids. And that needs to stop. And money needs to be for the students, for the teachers, not money spent to personally attack individuals, and that's not fair. And so I just wanted to take the time to thank my fellow colleagues for the appointment. I really enjoyed um, serving as the um, school board member for District 2. And I know I really didn't campaign. I had a lot of um, two loss in our families. And so, you know, that took a lot of my time. And so I just want to thank, thank each and every one of you and those that are out there continue to fight parents fight for your children and teachers you know hang in there because you deserve an increase you know and you know thank you for your dedication and your commitment and so now with the state budget you know in Santa Fe it's a critical year and I'm thinking that it's not gonna it's not gonna solve um, the, the um, the, the budget maybe in about three, four, four years down the road. So I know that coming from a real community and being raised in Crown Point, going to school in Crown Point, we could do it. And I know that our district can do it too. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Madam President. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Um, I just wanted to say uh, a big thanks to our three board members that um, will, will be replaced. Um, for, for Mr. Hideman, you know, I think, you know, we actually had the privilege of having you come on. Um, and I really believe that you made a great impact on this board and with all the knowledge that you have given in helping myself to become a better leader, you have actually really influenced me. And I really wish that you know we could get that from a lot of our um, elder leaders. I mean, I really wish they would um, do what you did and come and assist and help in a positive way, especially the positive way that you came in. Um, your six months, or your, you know, your what, year and a half, that you've been on the board has made a tremendous impact on Gallup McKinley County Schools, and I really would like to thank you for that. I appreciate you, I appreciate the work that you have done for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, Sandra. Um, for District um, 2, District 2 School Board member from Crown Point, New Mexico. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you have done as well. You have also made an impact within the six months that you have been here. And I honestly know that your your care was for the children and the, within the district. Not only that, your concern was a lot with the employees that were that are employed with Gallup McKinley County Schools. Um, you show um, great care. You have a big heart and you showed all of that. I'd like to thank you so much for all you have done. Thank you. Mr. Menini, <laughs> uh, um, you know, working with you for the past six, six and a half years, you know, I, I have also learned so much from you. And I'd like to thank you so much for being the leader that you have been, keeping us in line when we first came in, when I first came in, 
making sure that we did things properly, corrected us, and you know, being president and vice president of the board is is a major position. And you know, we when I came on, um, you know, we went just going to the first conference. You know, it was really blew my mind on how much. I didn't know about the education part of it. But with your help and, and Mr. Dr. Tempest as well, you know, it was, it was a lot easier to learn. And with your corrections during our meetings to making sure we don't get in trouble by saying or doing the wrong thing, I thank you so much for that. I thank you so much for all that you have done for this district, the care that you have given um, our children, employees, um, your work here for the past eight years um, has been great. Thank you so much, Mr. Minnie. Mr. Mitchell, thank you very much for those very nice comments. Appreciate it. Shinana, I just really would like to say thank you to each and every one of you. Um, I think one thing that made me nervous a lot of time was speaking my language up here um, to not offend anybody or to think that I'm talking about somebody or something. And Mr. Hedeman, you made me appreciate my language and you always encouraged me to speak as much Navajo as I can and I, and I kind of forgot about that and I just thank you for what you're doing, what you've done for this district to where we're moving in a new direction to where we are revitalizing and we are going to make this happen within our district. So like I said out at the chapter meetings where I don't have to interchange my, my own language with English where I can make a full report in Navajo, that's what I want for my children to where they can fluently speak and understand. Um, a part of them. So, that really warms my heart that there's actually somebody that's not even native. That is putting this much effort into our language. So I really appreciate that. And I commend you for putting up with us for a year and a half and continuing to provide that education to us, a lot of different views that you provided us. And I think the, the, it's the same with Mr. Menini. Your strength is incredible, sir. And I think that's the one thing I admire, no matter, you know, the old saying of standing alone, sometimes you did that at times and you stood firm and I appreciate that. And I think that's the strength that we all saw many times. And I, I appreciate that. And also the same thing of what Kevin said that you gave us a lot of experience. You brought in a lot of the do's and the don'ts in executive session and in here. And I appreciate that so much. And your encouragement of us to do better and me being nervous to be the board president and your encouragement is very thankful. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Manuelito. That's very encouraging. And thank you. thank you very much for your comments. I appreciate it so much. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> And now I know that I'll be the only lady on the board, but as I said at one of the chapter meetings, I can handle them. <laughs> I'm so thankful for you. Thank you so much for the the life you brought into our into our board. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. We did get um, 
our administration got cake for the board members. Um, so please enjoy a piece of cake in the back. There's some punch back there also. Um, we thank you guys all for giving us this time to recognize these fabulous individuals that dedicated their time to this board um, voluntarily. I know a lot of people say that we get paid, but we don't get paid to do this for our children, and it's for the dedication of our hearts and our compassion that we do this, so thank you very much for all of you guys. Mr. Hedeman, I mean Mr. Hyatt, sorry. Madam President, school board, uh, we'll move on to item number, or letter C and D. Um, I'd like to invite Dr. White and Mrs. Slivers to report on bilingual, the bilingual seal update and also the traditional <laughs> counselor position. The Navajo Nation has been working on the bilingual seal. They've revised the assessment. Um, it's a seal of bilingual proficiency. The assessment is given to graduating high school seniors only. The schools have to register seniors that want to take the assessment. They, and the seniors have to take the assessment on one of the four days, or actually five days that are listed. We only have three days to take the assessment before this year, school year's over. Um, after they take the assessment, the, um, they get scored, and then the Navajo Nation sends a letter to the school. Um, usually it's the high school counselor that is the person coordinating um, the assessment, signing up for the assessment for the students. And so the Navajo Nation sends a letter to the school and notifies the school of whether the student passed or not. From there, then they get recommended to have the bilingual seal on their high school diploma. Um, the assessment consists of like five sections. The first section is just basically um, an introduction, introducing yourself, talking about yourself. Um, the second part is um, they're given topics that they can speak to, and they're given a time limit of 10 minutes. The third part is um, questions it's kind of like a, um, a forum type. The test administrators will be asking them a question and they have to answer in Navajo. Um, the last part of it is watching a video. They watch a video clip of like five minutes. There's four, there's actually five different topics. They choose a topic, they watch the video clip. It's all in Navajo and then they have to summarize back to the, um, testing panel all in Navajo. At, in that part of the assessment, they are allowed to take notes. And then that's all of the whole assessment. There are, I think um, the testing panel is comprised of five individuals, two are school administrators um, or school personnel. One is from the Navajo Nation and there are two community members on each panel. Um, the first testing session is going to be this weekend in Winter Rock. They're, they're going to have two different groups going at the same time. I know that one of our students has um, registered for that one, and I think he is from Tohatchi High School. Um, currently, we have um, 36 students that are interested in registering for the assessment. Maya Mira has six. Rayma has five. Tohachi has the one that's already registered. Taigai has 24. And um, let me see. And that's about it that I have for now. I know one of the ones from Mayamira is already registered also. Um, we are also working on getting a bus to transport the kids since it is a Saturday. So I'm trying to coordinate with um, Taigai, Rayma, and Tohachi to see if we could bring buses from Tsege to Crown Point to Tarud and to Winter Rock, and then Rayma Gallup to Winter Rock, and hopefully Tohachi, Navajo, and to Winter Rock. Okay. 
Yeah, six from Mayamira High School, five from Rayma High School. Tohachi has one, and Seigai has 24. Do you have well, any questions? Excuse me, was there a deadline to register, ma'am? Um, no, the deadline is just before, 10 days before the testing. So they still can, uh, they can other still students? Yes, they can still register all the way up until um, March 8th. Does the school counselors know all this, ma'am? Some school counselors know it. Tohatchi, their school counselor knows, um, Crown Point. But at some schools, like at Mayamira and at Sayagay, um, Rayma, the Navajo language teacher is the one that's taking the lead on coordinating who's registering. Because it's a little disappointing that Gallup High School hasn't uh, shown any interest in this, and I know there's some counselors over there that could recommend some of the students to uh, get the seal, and I think it's very important. Um, for him to be on this diploma, so thank you. Madam President? Yes, Mr. Hinneman. Um, I'm very, appreciate the report, and I'm very happy to hear about trying to provide some transportation. Uh, this test has changed this year to be done in Window Rock, and actually, I hesitate to mention it, but I believe that's because the test was compromised last year when it was done in our district. One of the teachers got the test and distributed it, is what I'm told from Window Rock. So that's why they redid it to put it in Window Rock, which makes you know transportation and timing barrier because it's not on a school day and it, you got to get there. So I I appreciate the transportation plan and I hope we provide as much support for students who are interested, you know, to get there and do it. Um, we're most of our students are still closer than many. Even if you live in Albuquerque, you have to go to Window Rock for the Navo test, I believe. So we're fortunate that we're not further. Uh, and in the same connection, I would like to remind us that this bilingual seal is for any student who can demonstrate fluency mm -hmm. in any language. And so I think we had just, what, one or two or three Spanish speakers last year? It was just remember. very few. So I hope they're being one. reminded and encouraged oh. as well. And uh, again, we have some Filipino students who speak uh, Tagalog. And uh, so I, I just think it's pretty special in our country nowadays to be uh, able to demonstrate fluency. If you're a new, new immigrant, you might uh, speak two, three languages. But in a lot of our backgrounds, we've lost <laughs> language. And so if the students can become excited about and appreciate you know, the unique ability they have, and, and this is just one mechanism for that to encourage and recognize that. So I hope we keep uh, identifying the students who can do that, Navo, but also any languages that we, that students can, can handle this in. I don't know what is available for tests in all those languages. I don't know, I don't know how it was done last year for Spanish, but anyway, it's, it's for any language, so thank you. I have a couple of questions, Ms. Livers. Um, the first one is, are, I know, will you also be ordering um, the, the, the graduation shash um, for these individuals to have the seal on them? I believe so. I think that was done last year. So, I, I think, no, I think it was just on their, um, on their diploma, but I believe um, Tegai, um when Mr. Gepetti and I attended the Tsekai graduation, they had that printed for their students that way, um, the ones that did the seal. And that was something that we discussed after that um, graduation that we would, um, the district would find funding to do the seals for the students that did um, um, earn the, the seal for their task, graduates in SAS. So if you could check into that for us. And the other question I have would probably be for um, Mr. Hyatt, is who is um, setting up um, the other um, languages, the other bilingual seals, um, like what Mr. Hiddeman said, the um, Hispanic, the Spanish and stuff like that. Is there somebody? 
Madam President, that. That, would, that would fall under the same department in order to do that. Um, Dr. White, I don't know if you have any further information regarding other languages in the bilingual seal. For the other languages such as Spanish, we're going to be working with Linda Spencer who coordinated it last year as far as which students in all the schools are looking at using the criteria from the PED for the bilingual seal. So we'll be working on that as well. And by the, by the probably the end of March or the first part of April, we'll be, bringing, we'll be presenting the names of students who, um, who have earned a bilingual seal for approval. So do, do you guys get the results right away on who earned the seal? For, our, for Spanish and other languages, yes, because it's an internal district team that assesses the student, and they're the ones that determine proficiency level. But for Navajo, like Ms. Livers said, they will be sending a letter to, to Ms. Livers to say who has earned the seal. And then once we get that letter, we're going to bring that back here for approval. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, board members? Mr. Menini? Just to thank you very much. I think it's a very good uh, program. And every uh, Native American should have that uh, on their seal, on their diploma. So thank you. For the next topic of the traditional school counselor, we have several applicants who are still being processed um, based on the job description of the school counselor, the traditional school practitioner is what it's called. We, they can either, the requirements are not so high that it excludes a lot of people, but basically we're looking at either a bachelor's degree or a minimum of a bachelor's degree from a school, either in the field of counseling or psychology or social work. And then from there, we are, we are looking at providing I mean, professional development so they can be the practitioner, the, the traditional school practitioner. And after looking and further review of some of the requirements from the state that requires a counseling degree. A counseling degree, somebody with certified in counseling has to have a master's at, at best, at the least, I'm sorry, for a certified counselor position. But for the, for the practitioner, it's gonna be a um, bachelor, bachelor's degree minimum with experience in the traditional culture and knowledge of the traditional culture and language. So we're still planning on working and fulfilling that position. Last year, around this time, we had identified two funding sources for it. One was from the JOM pot of money, and one was from Title VI. And I know JOM changed their uh, funding so that it's more inclusive of uh, a mentor, mentorship type of person, but we're st under Title VII, we still have that. We're still gonna look for a, a school practitioner to fill that role. Questions for members? Madam President. Mr. Hederman. Um, I want to review, I, I did it recently, but the way I recall this position coming about uh, in discussion, and again, there may be some, some other history to this as well, but when we had a work session in this room last year, uh, trying to see how the board might respond uh, supportively to the Rue community specifically because of some of the suicide things and that were of concern that it happened and I think it was out of that discussion please feel free to <laughs> remind me if it's different but we said what kind of things can help connect with students and maybe a traditional kind of counselor person support person in the, in the school environment working with kids being available to kids would be one strategy. And I don't think that, and my, I expected when we had that discussion that this would necessarily be a degreed position. And I really think that the position description should be reviewed uh, in terms of a, a, a broader uh, job description and options. If a person can fulfill that connection with students in a traditional manner and have the formal 
psychology, social, social work, all that background as well, and that can come together, that should be so much stronger. But I'm thinking w after that, we had discussion, for instance, about the tribe's grandparent program, where particularly in elementary schools, you have grandparent figures who are in classrooms to provide that, that grandmotherly, grandfatherly figure uh, and the identity security that goes with that. And I'm thinking also that you could have a, a really advanced Atatli who wouldn't meet these qualifications. Um, so it, I would encourage the administration to review that job description. I do have a question with that because I don't know in New Mexico, I think Dr. White, you may be indicating that the term counselor, if it's used as a position description under state regs by requires certain degree things. So maybe maybe we need to find another term because of that that state factor, uh, and it's a good word. <laughs> I think it's as good as any. But if, if counselor means you have to have a degree or master's in counseling or something related, then that becomes a barrier. Uh, but I still think we haven't gotten a chance to try this out in terms of having a, a traditional elderly figure. And I, by elderly, I don't mean old. <laughs> necessarily, but a person who, who kids can, can feel secure with in terms of a, a, a family type, mother, grandmother, father, grandfather type, uncle, you know, that kind of relationship in a, in a way where they can be supported by the person and also confide in that person, you know, that kind of thing. And so I think it's still worth pursuing, but I think we need to maybe open the door a little wider in terms of what kind of person can qualify and what we expect of them. Uh, and again, I just say that because even I remember, I think I've mentioned that NAU, I don't know if they still have it, NAU had a, a, a husband and wife couple, I think, they were in that role uh, on campus for Navajo students. And uh, they, I, I can't quite, I don't have words to quite describe what that kind of person is like. <laughs> you know, except many of us, I think, are close to our like and respect our grandparents. There's something about grandparents. And again, it doesn't have to be quite that way, but, but it, that's kind of the spirit of it to me, where kids have that person in, in the school along with our formally trained, you know, normal staff. So I, I hope it does happen. And when JOM or, or whichever fund decided to transfer the funds for that position over to supplies because it wasn't getting filled. And I thought, well, let's not give it up, though. So I, I'm, I'm glad you're talking in terms of we have, an app, have applicants and still pursuing, but I think, um, I think putting a degree requirement on it maybe narrows our options. So that's my thinking. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hedeman. The official title of this position is traditional school practitioner. It's not a counselor. Okay. Plus also, we're looking at uh, revising the job description. We have to be cautious that, that we don't cross that fine line into cultural and religious activities because it's very easy to go beyond, cross that line when you're dealing with counseling kids and families. So we always have to be cognizant to keep church and, uh, church and state separate. Madam President, if there are no other questions, that concludes um, the superintendent's report for this evening. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Board members, I need a motion to enter into executive session. Um, Madam President? Yes. Um, before we do, we do the motion, um, I would just like to um, recognize uh, Mr. Michael Schaff, who's in the audience tonight, and he is our newly elected um, board member. Um, good to see you here, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. And with that, I guess I would like to make the motion to enter into executive session at this time. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Menini? Yes. Ms. Jeff? Yes. Mr. Heineman? Yes. Ms. Manuel Lito? Yes. 659.
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Motion to come out of executive session by Mr. Menini. Roll call, please. Mr. Heineman? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. 804. We did go into executive session and discuss um, everything that was on the um, executive session on the agenda. A, limited personnel matters related to discussion of employment of contract of new superintendent as permitted under section 10-15-1H2 of the New Mexico Open Meetings Act and communication with legal counsel regarding pitting or threatening litigation regarding threats of lawsuit from superintendent a discussion of communication with PED on um, complaint against the board as permitted under section 10-15-1H7 of the New Mexico Meetings Act. We'll go on to um, C, re action to ratify and approve the final contract for employment for the new superintendent. Do I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Manini. I, I vote yes, but I want to explain my vote. And it's for Mr. Hyatt to come forth and do the best he can. And I have still recollections with Mr. Chapetti because I'd like to keep him on the board as superintendent but I have no quorums with Mr. Hyatt's actions as I stated in our executive session that he's done a, showed us a very good improvement and therefore my answer would be yes. Thank you, Mr. Renee. Mr. Heineman? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. Thank you very much, board members. We'll go ahead and continue on with our agenda. We are on seven old business approval to cancel the pending um, RFP for legal services um, and Madam, did, did we withdraw the board reports? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Now I forgot where was that? Sorry. That's okay. Um, okay. Old business A and that is an action item. Um, so at this time I'd like to ask for a motion. President, I would move the approval or move to cancel the pending. That's the one, right? Yes, yes. I just didn't yeah. finish reading it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you for your motion, Mr. Hinneman. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Manini? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. Moving on to 8F, um, action to direct administration to pay any and all outstanding invoices of legal services by the end of February. I need a motion, please. Motion, Madam thank, President. Thank you, um, Mr. Manini. Roll call, please. Mr. Heineman? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. Madam President, I also want to note on the second page of the agenda underneath the notices and communication, there is an item four under there, under superintendent's report regarding orientation material for new board members. I just want to make sure that that's no longer necessary. There's no action on that anyways. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Hyde. On that one, um, I would like to just say um, this is something that we, thought we started discussing a few months ago, and due to the vast things that board members need to know, um, I, we made a suggestion to um, the superintendent to start some kind of a binder, a manual, resources um, that we can provide to the new incoming board members. Um, I did find out um, from Mr. Gein, who is the um, executive director to the New Mexico School Board Association, that each of them will be receiving a handbook that would help them also. Um, and I think I, I would suggest to the board and superintendent that maybe um, as suggested a retreat um, for the incoming board members um, would, would be helpful. But if the board members here uh, would like to provide any other additional information, um, you guys know how crazy it is and any resource that could benefit the board members would be appreciated. So um, I don't know if you want to submit stuff, if you want to give words of encouragement now, um, that would be up to you. Um, um, Madam President? Yes. Um, I guess to Lynn and Mr. Menini, you know, I would um, appreciate if you would, you know, offer the incoming new school board member some advice. And, and because, you know, a lot of the times, um, you know, we have master school board members or board members who have been on the board for a long time and then they have a new board member coming in. You know, that, that even if it's just a little piece of advice is, is something that they would remember. I mean, I, um, when I first came in, um, Genevieve Jackson was such a great help to me. Um, and she would call me and keep me and ask me, you know, how I was doing, and, 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 and that meant a lot to me. And those are the type of leaders that, you know, I look up to. So, you know, thank you. Yeah, with that, uh, Madam President, Mr. Mitchell, I have asked the two newcomers that are in town to call me anytime and uh, give them some piece of, of advice. But it's up to just advice. They can do what they want. They're on the board now. So it's up to them if they want to come forth. Thank you. Mr. Benini, will you please do the honor? Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I need to go shoot my fireworks off, so thank you. <laughs> I make a motion that's being be adjourned. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Benini. Roll call, please. Mr. Heineman? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. 812.